Hello and welcome to Sploder's first ever screencast. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about Sploder's physics puzzle maker. Um, it's new and uh, I hope you all like it. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to show uh, people how to make uh, a game like Angry Birds. So uh, I know it's a really popular game and uh, we have an example on the site, but I'm going to walk you through how to make it yourselves. So. Uh, there's two elements to the game, really. There's the actual uh, projectile cannon, and then there's the building itself. So let's start with making a, uh, a building that we can then smash up. And uh, that's pretty easy. What we're going to do is just make some uh, columns and things like that. What we're going to do is start with the draw tool, and we're going to select from the shape menu here. Uh, there's many shapes you can choose from. Uh, we want to make a building that stands, so it's good to choose a rectilinear shape. And uh, I'm going to just start by dragging on the screen, clicking and dragging. And uh, I'm going to then take this, and you can see these handles that appear. I can change the size of the rectangle. You can rotate, but I think we're going to keep it straight up and down. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make copies of this shape. You can hold down the shift key and then drag. You can make an exact copy. So now we've got two columns here. We're going to make a third. And uh, this can be the base of our building. And uh, what we can do now is I'm going to make these guys a little bit smaller because it's going to be a cramped space. So uh, let's try this. And uh, we want to make these guys so that they're uh, breakable. So uh, we're going to start here by using the window select tool. And I can just drag across here, select multiple things. And then I can go over here and I can see these same selection boxes, but I can't change the shape. But I can change things like motion. And we'll go over that later. But right now we're going to let these guys be free as the wind here. We're going to just let them go. Uh, and... We have materials we can choose from. I'm going to stick with the default. And then here is what we're going to do for making them breakable. So right here, this gray rectangle, we can choose uh, strong, medium, and weak. And we're going to, since this is the bottom of the building, we're going to choose pretty strong, still breakable, but pretty darn strong. And uh, now I'm going to make some beams. And I'm going to pick the draw tool. And uh, my selection was still saved, so I could just Go ahead and draw a rectangle shape. And now I've got my first level of my building. And now I'm going to make a second level. I'm going to make these guys a little weaker and try to get it the same size as the previous level. And so now we have two floors. And the first floor is very strong, and the second one is medium. And finally, I'm going to make a weak floor level and join these shapes like this and currently they're all made out of wood as far as the material is concerned and for me that's fine uh, for this for this part of the demonstration so we've got a strong medium and weak floor and um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a projectile can and now uh, now is a good time to bring up the fact that we have these prefabs uh, which prefabs are prefabricated or ready-made objects. Uh, so uh, in here, if you click down here, you can get more. You can see all of them. Uh, we've got all kinds of things. We've got a player. And the only thing about these is that these have all been made with the creator itself, and I've just, been, I've just saved them for you so you can get started quickly. For instance, now that we've made this building, and I want to go ahead and quickly destroy it and not have to make a, uh, a complex projectile shooting thing, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and drag and drop that prefab, which is the turret car. And uh, now we've got the turret car here, and we're going to move it so that it's touching the ground. And uh, we can go ahead and quickly, just to see, you know, if things are working out, we're going to quickly test. And when you do test, you'll actually see how it's going to work in the game. And uh, I'm moving my mouse up and down, and the turret car will aim with my mouse. And when I press down with the mouse button, you can see, boom. 
I'm actually breaking things and as I shoot down lower, it's actually very hard to break these bottom ones. Uh, but the top ones went right away. So you can see uh, that testing really shows us quickly how to make a game uh, and see how it reacts. And you can then learn from what you just tested and modify it accordingly. Now, uh, we don't yet have a game. We just have a thing that shoots and breaks things. So what we need, need to do is, a la Angry Birds, we need to put in some bad guys that are some pigs or whatever you want them to be into the game. So what we're going to do is use that. I'm going to make these from scratch again. I'm going to use the drawing tool and I'm going to choose the circle tool and uh, I'll stick with wood. It doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, and I'm going to make some bad guys in here. So these guys live inside. A little bit of slowness because I'm recording at the same time. So there's a little bit of lag. Sorry about that. Okay, now we've got our guys in here. Now if we uh, if we want to know what that's going to look like, we can quickly test and it's going to look pretty boring. Uh, everything's the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these guys look like bad guys. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pick the paint tool. And paint tool actually makes it appear as it will in the game. And you can see over here we've got these new selections appear. For instance, if I go back to the draw tool or the select tool, you'll see different things appearing over here. This is sort of a, a modal box that, that changes according to what tool we have. So now that I've changed the paint tool, and I'm in order to select multiple here, I'm holding down shift, and I'm hoping that appears here. Um, I'm selecting these six guys, and I'm going to change their color. This is the fill color. And I'm going to change their outline. I don't want the exact same outline. I'm going to choose a little bit brighter there. Now they kind of pop a little. And now finally I'm going to choose their texture and I'm going to make these guys look not too happy about being where they are. Now, uh, another thing I want to do for the look and feel of the building, since we have three different materials for the three different floors, I'm going to choose three different looks and feel for the level. So, uh, for this level, I'm going to I'm going to just go ahead and turn off the outline. You can just turn off any of these guys by just picking the first item here. I'm going to turn off the outline, and I'm going to choose a red color and give a texture of brick because that is the strongest floor. I'm going to make it look like brick, and uh, this level I'm going to make look like maybe some. Uh, sheet rock or something like that. We're going to make this no line and we're going to make it grayish. And, uh, you know, it's up to you. This is your world. You can make it look however you like. Uh, and then for the top layer, I'm going to make this look like plywood or something really weak comparatively. So there we go. We've got a building with three different color floors so that you get an idea when you play the game, oh, these are different uh, as far as their strength. Now, one other little thing I wanted to show off was this little feature right here. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but you can select the pieces and you can make, by clicking this button, you can make them look uh, scribbled or hand-drawn. just gives the game a fun look. So now we've got a building that's a little, uh, a bet looks like it's about to be destroyed and a little bit not in the greatest of shape. Okay, so now we've got our projectile shooting machine and we've got our bad guys in this building and they're just ready to be destroyed. So let's test it out. And we go boom like this. And you'll see, oops, the guys don't actually get destroyed. What we need to do now we need to go back to the blueprint mode, we need to go to the select tool, select these guys and make them so that they are really easy to get rid of. So I've just made them strength weak and now they're very weak. Even though we've changed that, they look the same in the game because we've already set that up. Um, but now that when we test it and we knock over the floor, boom, 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 they're gone. And except for the guys down here who we're inside the brick area, so it's not going to be one-shot deal, but it'll be fun. Okay, so 
Now we've got this game where, well, it's not really a game, it's just a simulation. So what we need to do now is set up some goals for the game and make sure that we're getting some credit for getting rid of these bad guys. So I'm going to select these bad guys again, holding, again, holding down shift and just selecting to select all six of them. And then I'm going to go back to the blueprint mode and click this special button right here, which is basically the heart of all of the logic of your game right here, this button for any selection. You're linking events to actions in the game. So you can create a, if event happen, an event happens like crush right here, I want to do something to give myself credit. So when those guys are crushed, I'm going to give them a score. So all I need to do is check that box. Basically, you're coding your game just by selecting combinations of check boxes inside here. You're linking this event, crush, to this action, score. So for every crush, I get a score. And if I apply that, now that's there, okay? And now that the, the since there are six of them, of course, the top score is going to be six in the game. And the default in this, whenever you start a new game, the default, default is 10 points. So obviously I need to change that. So I'm going to go over here to goals. And I'm going to change my top score to win level to six. And I'm going to click apply. So now that, look at that one more time. Now that uh, that is six, and if I get all six guys, I win. So let's try it out. Test. Okay, here comes my first shot. Plus one, plus one. All right, I got four, five. Ooh, I almost got all six in one shot. There we go. So that's very good. It's not very challenging because I have a lot of shots in here. Um, but what you can do is you can make it even more challenging by uh, clicking on your object here. You can change things in, in your projectiles. If I click on this modifier for my projectile itself, this is the adder, which responds to mouse click, which basically creates a duplicate of this object every time I click my mouse. So now, uh, right now, my total adds are set to 10. So I have 10 uh, shots for this game. So maybe I'm, if I make that lower, cut that down to three, I think it's still going to be pretty easy, but I could have made it a more complicated game. In fact, maybe if I take this and make it a little bit harder to kill, to destroy this building. There we go. Now this is a little bit tougher. Got two strong blocks here, and we've only got three shots. Um, and another thing I'm going to do is... I'm going to make sure that I lose at the end if I run out of ammo. So I'm going to click on this object. And again, I'm going to click on this flag. And I'm going to say on adder, factory or spawner empty, I'm going to end game. So, in fact, I don't think I've ever done that. So I hope it works. Uh, so let's test it out. Uh, here we go. Let's see how good I am. Uh-oh. Oh, I did it. Okay, let's let's uh, try and lose this time. I'm not good. Okay. Now there's the last guy right here, falling down, just touching the ground just now, and I failed because uh, after that expired, I lost all my lives and the game ended because I didn't get all the guys in time. Whatever event fires first will uh, be the, the one that actually prevails and nothing else will happen after that. So uh, if I were to win the game by a score and then my last one went, I would still win. It wouldn't, uh, wouldn't override that. So now I've got a real game. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll have more of these screencasts coming up.